killed 450 prophets of Baal. He killed them. Then he hears here in verse 19, chapter 19, verse 1, it says, And Ahab told Jezebel what happened. Told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slayed all the prophets with the sword. This is a bad man of God. Would y'all agree with that? Killed 450. Then what it says here, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I, make not thy, if I don't make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. You know what she said? She said, I'm going to kill you, monkey. <laughs> you, <laughs> you killed my men by this time tomorrow. I'm going to kill you. And you know what Elijah should have said? What's up? I mean, they got some bad women. But ain't no woman that bad. You just killed 450 men by yourself? And now one woman going to tell you she's going to kill you? And you're going to get discouraged? That's a bad sister. She must be from the hood. <laughs> 450 men you just killed, Elijah? And Elijah, come on, come on, y'all stay with me. And Elijah, you just saw fire come down from heaven and destroy everything. You know you got God on your side. And then one sister... going to tell you she going to kill you and you going to book? <laughs> the brother booked. He took off running like a, a dog with his tail between his legs. He was scared that a woman was going to kill him. No, you would think Elijah said, wait a minute. The same God that helped me kill them 450 uncircumcised Philistine, the same God that brought deliverance and brought his fire down from him. Jezebel, bring your ugly self on over here. I'm going to kill you just like I killed them. No, he didn't even say a word. No, he didn't say a word. He jumped up and took off running. Turn to neighbor and say, that, I hope that spirit ain't nowhere close to you right now. Look what it says here. And then it says in verse 4, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might what? Could you underline that? Ain't that something? Come on. See, but that's what happened when you get discouraged. One woman said something to him that she was going to kill him, and homeboy got so scared that he ran and got discouraged, and now he's sitting under a tree in the wilderness and said, I want to die. <laughs> he need a good whooping, though. <laughs> he just had one of the biggest victories anybody ever had. Isn't that something about how some of us, God just healed you before, and then now some, the doctor tell you something else, and now you're running around here with your head all down. Well, you know, the doctor said, I got the eebie-jeebie, eebie-weebies. Well, you know what? You know what? I ain't got but a few days to live. Shut up! Shut up. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Quit giving place to the enemy. Yeah. Raise your head up. Pull your shoulders back. Yeah. Declare your voice and use your authority and say, I'm not going to bow down to the sickness of cancer or sickness of disease. I'm not bowing down to divorce. I'm not bowing down to any negative thing. I'm more than a... I'm a world over. I walk by and not by. My God supplies. All my need according to his riches and glory. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I declare that I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my... every part of my body functions in the perfection it was designed to function in. Somewhere in the name of Jesus, 
You can't sit around here and play the fiddle of bad news and start talking about how bad it is. You got authority in the name of Jesus. You got the power of the word, authority in Jesus' name. You got the blood. You got dominion over every creeping thing. Tell those creeping things to get out. Did I just spit on you? Well, if I did, receive your healing in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Some of y'all laughing, but y'all should be praying. Y'all should be praying. Spit on me, preacher. Shikaba. Number one. Here we go. Number one. Number one. The first area about discouragement, number one is... Think on what God has done in your life. Think about what he has done. Has he been good to you? Has he showed himself strong in any area? You know, sometimes you just got to look back and, and rewind the recorder and look back what he did for you before. If he ever healed you, if he ever delivered you, if he ever brought a breakthrough, if he ever showed himself strong in any area, go back and say, he did it before? He can do it again. Number two, see God bigger than your problem. See God bigger than your problem. Say, say, see God bigger than your problem. Now listen here. See God bigger than your problem. Look, look at here. Look at here. David. Y'all remember David? Because that's Genesis, uh, 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 First Samuel, seventeen chapter. David. They hear David is. He's he's a kid. They overlooked him. In the area of being a king, he's out there in the field with these, with these sheep. That's right. But what happened while David was in the field with the sheep, a lion came. That's right. A lion came, and what did David do? He, he didn't run from the lion. David charged the lion and killed the lion. and said he grabbed him by the beard. David was a warrior. Oh, I wish I had some warriors in here today. David was a warrior. Grabbed him by the beard and killed the lion. Then he said a bear came. And then David charged the bear and killed the bear. This is a kid. Then all of a sudden his daddy said, David, go and take a lunch to, my, to, to your big brother out there who's fighting all them Philistines. When David get there, there wasn't no fight going on because he was all scared. Now I've been there. I've been to that area, that, that region where they, where they were. And on one side of the hill, the Philistines is over there, and they got Goliath. Goliath is almost 10 feet tall. He's a huge man. He's been trained for war all his life. On this side, we got the, got the Israelites. And then all of a sudden, a little kid comes up with a lunch. And then he comes up there, and he says to them, and, and, and then David hears about whoever kills Goliath going to get the king's daughter. And she was fired. And don't have to pay no taxes. And you get to live in the palace. And David said, where is this guy? Where is this guy? I got to kill me somebody today. David goes out there, and here's big old Goliath selling wolf tickets, talking bad. And then David turns around, and it says, and David had no shield, no sword, had, had no helmet on, and David says, and he ran to Goliath. See, the difference between David and you, or the difference between you and the children of Israel, or the Israelites, or the Philistines, most people, when they have a problem, like maybe like you're dealing with today, or circumstance, what they do is they measure their problem or their Goliath according to the size of them. But David did not measure Goliath according to the size of him, David measured Goliath according to the size of his God. I so I got to ask y'all a question over here today. I want to know how big is your God? Do you serve a big God? See, I want to know do you serve a little God or a big God? Ask your neighbor there and say, neighbor, how big is your God? If you serve a little God, if you serve a little God, 
You're going to always have little results in your life. You're going to always be crying about what, how bad the devil is, how society, how bad everybody is. But when you serve a big God, big God does big things. I just want to testify today, I serve a big God. Nobody greater than him. Nobody greater than him. What can rise up against you and what can separate you from the love of God? Shall pearls and swine and whatever it is, can it separate you? Not at all. So I, I, I was, uh, uh, I was, uh, uh, number, uh, I was, where's my Bible? I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, the bank, a bank in town. I got a piece of prime property and the bank closed, well, going to call me up talked to my wife and threatened my wife and said, we're, gonna, we're going to call the note on your property. Call the note. Well, it's a big piece of property and it's, it's worth a lot. And they called the note on it. We've been paying faithfully on this property every month, five years, pay, pay, never missed a payment. Then they're going to call the note. You know why? Because a bunch of them guys then got together and they want my property, so they're going to take it from me by calling the note on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then they got in bed with each other. So I, I, I said, I told Brenda, because my wife all shook, I said, Brenda, call the, the, the president of that bank and tell him I want to see him. Tell him to bring all his little VPs with him, too. <laughs> bring the little VPs with him. So I walked into the bank, walked into the bank, and I get into the room in there. You know what he tells me? Well, I'm in a rush, so we need to just get right to it. I said, well, let's just do that. <laughs> I, I, I ain't no sister. I've been around a long time. I, I, said, I said, he said, let's just get in the hair of this. Let's get to it real quickly here. I said, well, let's just do that. You, I ain't scared of you. He, he didn't know who he was dealing with. And, and then he said, he said, well, you, uh, we just decided we're going to call the, the loan, and we, just, we, we decided this time we're not married, we're making no money. I said, you're not making no money. What you mean? You a criminal anyway. I said, listen to me, I've been paying 12% interest on this thing. Ain't nobody else charging that much on no interest, on no loan. You, you're robbing me anyway. But I've been paying it, and now you're going to try to steal my property from me. I said, you done messed with the wrong person. You done messed with the wrong person. Evidently, you don't even know who I am. He's going to try to rise up a little bit, going to get a little attitude. I said, listen to me. You don't know who I am. Come on. In fact, before I came in this office and see you, you should have took out your time to find out who I am. But you didn't mess with the wrong boy today. Because I said, I came in here to fight you. I said, I came in here to fight you. Come on. I ain't scared of you. He looked at me like, I wonder if he's going to really fight me. <laughs> Well, if I had to, it's more easy to go ahead and, and, and whoop them and then get forgiveness than it is to get permission. <laughs> Afterwards, we, we, we did a little, a little rumbling and grumbling, and I said, listen to me, you don't know who I am, and I will deal with you, and you will have a severe blow behind dealing with me. You're not going to steal my property. You're not going to mistreat me. You're not going to take advantage of me. You're going to do what I say. And the guy said, turn around, then he changed his head. You know what? I said, we can work this out. She said, in fact, I give you my word we're going to work it out. Somewhere, somewhere, we got to quit being, excuse me if this bothers you, but we got to quit being pumped. We got to quit being a bunch of sissy Christians and allow the devil to run over us and take advantage of us and not being able to put up a big, big, big fight. God gave us authority, gave us power, gave us dominion to be able to exercise in this earth realm. And if you're sitting around here and you're just crying about it and you want to talk about how bad things are, you're never going to change your situation. Somewhere you got to use what God has given you. I'm Dr. Philip Godot and I want to invite you to our FCMI International Convention July the 12th through the 15th. July the 12th through the 15th here in Sacramento, California. Uh, I guarantee you that your life will never be the same again. I want you pastors to invite you personally as well as your congregation to come. 
and as well as all you businessmen and women. FCMI is about building the whole body uh, in every area to bring the kings and the priests, the businessmen and women together to do something great for the kingdom of God. I believe that truly the greatest riches and the greatest blessings is when the kings and priests work together. So come and be a part of our international convention. Now, we have three major conferences going on at one time. We have a youth conference for the children and for the youth. We have a children's conference, youth conference, and we have the FCMI International Conference. So we have three major conferences going on here in Sacramento, July the 12th through the 15th. I want you to come. I want you to be a part of it. And I believe that your life will never be the same again, and you will reach your peak potential by being a part of this conference. Amen. Love you. Looking forward to seeing you July the 12th through the 15th. It's time to prepare for a power-packed conference right here in the capital city. Fellowship Covenant Ministries International presents three conference events in one. You will have the anointed word with Dr. Philip and Brenda Godot and other special speakers to get you fired up. And for the kids and teens, we have it all laid out. It's non-stop fun, 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 summer fun for the kids. There will be games, Bible study, and plenty of playtime. And our youth ministries will focus on issues only they can relate to. There will be music, singing, and plenty of words. Yeah. Register today and reserve your spot for FCMI's International Conference. Yeehaw! See you there. Quit giving place to the enemy. Raise your head up. Pull your shoulders back. Declare your voice and use your authority and say, I'm not going to bow down to the sickness of cancer or sickness of disease. I'm not bowing down to divorce. I'm not bowing down to any negative thing. I'm more than a, I'm a world over. I walk by and not by my God supplies. All my need according to his and the glory. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I declare that I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my, every part of my body. To order your copy of today's message, call 888-271-1641 or visit pgim.org. Thanks for watching A Father's Heart.